Hey everybody, welcome back. Yes, back in the saddle again. Hope you enjoyed that Kai Beats week. Man, that was a lot of fun. And don't forget the live draw coming up this coming Friday. Two lucky winners, two Kai Beats going to two good homes. at a brand new and I mean brand spanking new from Anning the AN998 here we go big shout out to Banggood thanks so much for sending in the Anning for this review really unusual design here as you can tell uh, not your standard multimeter so to speak the AN998 definitely takes things oh it's for a slightly different curve but hey that's okay you know what innovation and whatever it's not a bad thing as long as it works Alrighty, what do you get? Well, first of all, you do get the meter. And I gotta say offhand, um, this is a pretty decent little meter. Uh, small, but it's heavy, it's heavy. It's not a light, cheesy plastic like I was expecting. Um, in fact, it's actually got some weight to it. So that's a good thing. No rubberized boot, uh, nothing at all to protect the outer shell. That's too bad. A nice little rubber membrane perhaps would have taken it up a notch. But, um, but that being said, overall fit and finish to begin with, Seems to be pretty decent. You do get your standard thermocouple, El Cheapo thermocouple at that, but this does do temperature. Of course, we get our standard user manual. Not bad for El Cheapo, I gotta say. Once again, um, this is all in English. Do get a separate one in Chinese, but uh, the English one is pretty good. And all there, and pictures, diagrams, schematics, what have you. Pretty decent little manual for a Cheapo multimeter. Unlike your standard multimeter, the little Anning doesn't have a standard selector switch. You've got those two buttons. Now this does claim the fame of smart mode, in, but um, to me it's a lot more, not so much like the pen style meter here, but a little more like this. Um, yeah, really, same kind of overall design. Now this is really not much more than a, a uh, voltage tester, but uh, Anning is taken up a notch by providing full multimeter functionality, which in this sort of um, uh, ergonomic design is kind of a novel idea. Powered by two AAA batteries, easy access via one Phillips in the back. But uh, you can see once again, no tilt stand, no tilt stand, no magnet, nada, not a pinata. So uh, that sucks. Just removing that plastic protector and let's turn it on and see what we've got for a display. So there we are, reverse EBTN display, not color, uh, strictly monochrome. And we are greeted with a, what the heck is that anyway? Veil? Now, <laughs> this took me a little while to figure out what the heck it is that you're trying to say on the boot up screen. And the best, at least I'm throwing it out there, this is my uh, my take on it. They're trying to say valet. So you're sort of in valet mode. Um, you know, kind of like, we're gonna do it all for you. Just come see the valet because it's a smart meter they put you in valet mode. At least that's what I'm thinking. If you think differently, have another idea, let me know, but I'm just, that's, that's my guess. Uh, dual display, right off the get-go, we have that volt, uh, not volt, the temperature at the bottom, uh, 17.8 degrees Celsius. That's a nice feature, of course. Hey, you got the screen, why not utilize the space? And it's not an overly big screen, uh, really. It's actually quite small. For whatever reason, Anning decided not to color code those inputs. Fail! Why, oh why do these OEMs do this? I don't understand it. Please, positive and negative, red and black, it ain't rocket science. Speaking of test leads, I almost forgot, it does come with a set of test leads. Um, maximum 10 amp, they don't have the Anning branding on them at all. They seem okay, um, pretty sharp. Um, probably a little step up above from the cheapos. Uh, standard PVC fare, standard length, nothing special going on. Shroud is, is okay, it's decent shroud. Um, yeah, hey, they're okay. So with this particular meter as well, um, two settings is all it has. We have that select power switch, and that's just how you can turn this into manual mode, just by hitting the select switch, and now we are basically in manual override, which is a good thing. Love it when we don't have to smart our way through everything. Hey, that's a bonus. The bottom, they have another Anning first. Um, we have the flashlight. Yeah, we know that's not really a first. And we have something called live wall. Yeah, so they're not calling it NCV, they're calling it live wall. And it's the same darn thing. Live wall with different indicators depending on the um, intensity of that uh, 
voltage. So uh, I would have preferred just to see NCV, but hey, by the way, that flashlight, not that bright really, but I mean, hey, it'll be useful, especially if it's pitch black. Oh boy, me and my big mouth. So the leads can get a little problematic, get in the way perhaps. Um, I find the easiest way is to have them split uh, directly opposite each other like so. DC precision voltage time, starting off with 5.020 volts. 5.000 is what we wanted. All right, let's start off with one mega ohm. Hey, not too shabby. Two mega ohm. Three mega ohm. Four mega ohm. Let's go up to six. And let's try eight mega ohm. Well, speed-wise, a little bit better than I was expecting. Uh, I've seen worse. Not the fastest, but definitely not the worst. Okay, let's try accuracy. Let's try a low 0.5 of an ohm resistor. Can it even get down there? And it does, 0.6 of an ohm. Let's put those leads together, see if we have any resistance on those test leads. And no, we don't. Very one thing to notice is for the manual arranging, we have no option for resistance. So we are SOL on that count. Alrighty, so basically automatic for voltage, ACDC, as well as resistance. Let's just check the accuracy resistor-wise, 100K. Alrighty, not so bad. Let's try 100 ohm. Let's try 100 ohm. Diode time, here we go. There we go. Start off with a standard diode, and we have a nice forward voltage drop, but no beep, no audible beep. That's too bad. Here we go. Red LED, yes, with a forward voltage drop. Yellow, looking good. Green, blue, oh yes. Are we five for five? Yes, we are five for five. Luminates and gives us that forward voltage drop. Excellent. And checky, checky, almost four volts output voltage in diode mode. Beauty. Ready continuity, here we come. Stock default test probes. Oh yes, it's a fail. So at least one second before we get that latched, but it is loud. Ugh, loud but slow. Let's try the Probe Masters. Probe Masters. Yeah, really no difference here. No difference at all. Seventy one point nine decibels maximum output in continuity. Next up, a very quick look at frequency. Uh, it only goes up to one kilohertz. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Not very much. But hey, let's see if it works at least. Sitting at one hertz right now and looking good. 10 hertz. There we are. 100 hertz. Yes. One kilohertz. Oh, yes. 1000 hertz. Finally, 10 kilohertz. Uh, no can do. Oh, don't fall down. Don't fall down. All right. So it's it's a little bit embarrassed. But yeah, there you go. It works at least. And a quick look at AC voltage, 121.7 volts, true RMS, looking good. And by the way, you can see that frequency at the bottom, 59 hertz, uh, 60 thereabouts. So uh, yeah, very nice to have that split screen when you're checking the AC voltage. By the way, this does not do current. No, not even microamps, milliamps, not a can do. So if you want current, pass the 998 by. <clears throat> And by the way, no, the 998 does not do current, not even milliamps. Oh, that's too bad. And yes, for my capacitance friends out there. Oh boy, they always give me hip when I forget to do capacitance. Um, just so you know, I try my best. Sometimes I just don't have enough time in a video to review every single function, but I know capacitance is kind of important. So I do apologize if I negate it at some point. Anyway, here we are. Today we're testing capacitance, the nice 47 millifarad capacitor. This has a maximum of 60 millifarad, 60,000 microfarad. Here we go, let's see how long it takes to get to 47 millifarad. It's thinking so we have that uh, nice display, at least letting us know now it's in millifarad mode. Thinking, 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 and there we are, 43.65, ish, ish. Okay, 49, a little high, now it's back to 41, 42. So 43-ish is where it usually is, depending on the meter. But uh, yeah, a little bit of wavering going on there. 42 to 45, so I'll give it a hit. Yeah, that works. Now finally beside it, we have a smaller, much smaller cap. This is a 560 microfarad. And let's just see the difference in time to get to 560. 
basically half a millifarad. Here we are, microfarad mode and 521. So there you go. Probably not the fastest once again, but hey, at least it works. So long press to get into live wall mode, also known as NCV. And here we go. So that seems to be pretty decent. We have a visual as well as a audible indicator. And look at that, we have two sets of lines. So we have the arrows here and we have the nice uh, green, amber and red display. I like it. I like it, I like it. Okay, let's try a wall because after all it's live wall. All right, first I'll try this very problematic light switch. And actually with the 998, No issues. Very good, okay. And once again, mains panel. Oh yeah, well of course that's not gonna be problematic. Beauty. Well, thus far I gotta say, you know, I'm kind of impressed. It's not blowing me away or anything, but at least it's working and it seems to be fairly good at what it's doing. So let's take a look now on the inside. So first things first, there we are in the back. Two AAAs are what powers this little beast. And we have a nice threaded brass insert as well. Good stuff. Okay, let's get deeper, deeper. Okay, teardown time. Here we go, starting off with those input jacks. Yes, the split variety is what they are, but look at those soldering joints. Wow, nice and thick blobs of solder there. So that's gonna handle a lot of wear and tear over the long run, good to see. Now this doesn't do current, so we don't have anything in terms of fuses or current shunts, nothing like that. Moving up to the top of the meter, we have our Holtec HT1621B. That is the LCD display driver, giving us all that great LCD. Goodness, oh man, that's such a nice looking screen. Uh, here is our piezo speaker. Here is the relay. Now it's a little bit on the noisy side. Um, I must say for a smart meter, yeah, it just tends to be a little bit louder than some of them. But uh, nonetheless, that's what's doing all those range switches. Moving up, we have one tiny TP PTC here for the voltage. And of course there is our LED for the flashlight. Now the NCV detection, as you can see, we have that you nice, guys, look at that nice big blob of solder on there. Really just a metal filament, but it is protruding and we do have that uh, little notch at the top of the meter as well. So it's not just for looks, it's actually uh, giving us uh, some protection for that metal filament. Crystal oscillator over here, main IC is cobbed. I don't see a separate EP ROM, but uh, generally speaking, nice, clean, small PC, but it is fairly thick I've noticed as well. So that's always a good thing. Uh, revision 09. Fab date 10506 2021. Here's a good close up of that PCB. Nice and compact, clean, no flux, everything looking really nice. And reverse side of the meter itself. Uh, yeah, no shielding. No surprises, I know. Um, there we are. Okay, plastics. Um, yeah, already gonna put it back together, come back with my Holy Austin, awesome the little box. ending with valet mode. Hey, the AN998 is not a bad little meter. I mean, question is, it's a weird little meter. It's different, it's it's not your standard multimeter. It's more like a test pen, but test pen multimeter. I don't know, it's not a test pen. It's like, well, you see where I'm coming from? It's kind of confusing even for all that aside. At the end of the day, it does what it does fairly well. At the end of the day, throw it in your pocket. I definitely think it's a step up from your standard voltage tester. Really nice, clean EBTN display readout. Very easy on the eyes, even outside, glare-wise, not so shabby. And obviously, indoors, wonderful. Doesn't do current, which might be a ho-hum for some people, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's not bad. Now, take note, it only goes up to 400 volts AC-DC. 400 volts AC-DC. So if you need anything higher, uh, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. But I think price-wise for around $20 US, it's fair to say that this is a good, decent choice for somebody who might not need full multimeter functionality, but wants to have the basics with him. The Anning AN998 gets a respectable three out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this smart multimeter review or pen meter or whatever it is meter. Till the next one, keep on testing. Quick look at frequency. Frequency? The freak?